Um, I am unfortunately going to have to cover something I don't like to talk about, which is VTubers. I hate talking about VTubers, but uh, there is a reason why I want to talk about VTubers today. I will show you. Uh, I mentioned the last time I talked about Rakeda, one of his Friday fun streams, Friday coom streams, involved a guy named Sir Camelot. I don't know if he's literally named it's Sir uh, Camelot, but like it's spelled Camelot. I think that everyone calls him Coom a lot. I don't know if that's like a deliberate thing, but he's like a gross Coomer guy. And he decided to post this picture of a random woman and declare that it was the VTuber Pippa Pipkins. Um, I have confirmed through my sources that this is not Pippa Pipkins. But that did not stop her her undying simp army from descending on this man like a zombie apocalypse. And he has put out an apology, apologizing for ever trying to besmirch the, the name of Pippa Pipkins by, by insisting that she had a physical corporeal form, which uh, he could take pictures of. And that's long and short of that. However, the whole drama got Rakeda to publish a YouTube video discussing the matter. It's two minutes long. Let's take a listen to it. Did you guys, uh, did you guys see Camelot get in trouble with the VTuber, like, uh, Sims? That's, that was funny. That's been very funny. Um, whew. So Camelot posted a picture of someone who is not Pippa. And he said, posting this picture, this girl at my house who's definitely not Pippa taking pictures of my cat. And it's, I have to reiterate, it's not Pippa. I have met the girl he took a picture of. That ain't Pippa. And they went fucking ape on him. It was insane. Yeah, and, and then he made an apology, and they're they're pissed off about the apology. Dude, I, I've said it. The, the VTuber community is something else. It is something else. Um, I try it when, when VTubers, we were talking a lot about the uh, playboard and stuff, and I brought up all of the big VTubers are... Um, are all of the top super chatters are all big VTubers. And it isn't even close. It isn't even close. Um, it's because the, the VTuber viewers are something else. Yeah, I think it's funny that Camelot kicked the Hornets nose. It's just, it's like, wow. You know, one of these is a fat guy pretending to be a girl. Man, I wish I was a VTuber pretending to be a chick a thing to raise your voice to insane octaves and then just sit there and make tons of money way more than you would otherwise make i could be lawyer chan or something lawyer son only lawyer son it'd be uh it'd be awful the um the interesting thing about this is that even i remember offhand that Rikeda wanted to have Pippa Pipkins on his Friday fun streams and her agency phase connect told him no. And he really tried to finagle phase connect to allow her to appear on his streams. And then I think something happened with his fan base and phase connect to the point where all of phase connects VTubers are no longer allowed to do anything with any type of of law tuber i could be wrong with that but i remember that happening so him coming out and like shitting on vtubers like oh vtubers are just fucking whores for like anime simp audiences like um i mean you were trying to dip your dip your 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 tostita chip into that sauce my boy you're trying to scoop out a little something something for yourself not too long ago until they told you no I'm not, I'm not going to blame him. I mean, he's already got the anime Tostita chip full of salsa, right? But it's like trying to dip into that VTuber stuff and it didn't happen. 
Just saying. Um, however, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason why I played this. And it's not because I'm desperate to talk about VTubers or Nick Ricada. Um, As many people in chat have noticed, there is a glorious red sun rising in the sky. That's right, chat. It's time for the China segment. Now, we're going to do a little bit of Sino Linguistics. He has on his pack a tattoo of a Chinese glyph. <laughs> and therefore, I invite myself to discuss with you all the Chinese language. I have looked up this symbol and I it does not make sense on its own. On its own, it just means anger. Um, but if it were, it, as you see here, it says literary and classical Chinese, it means anger. Um, you cannot use it by itself. On its own, it doesn't mean anything. However, if we were to talk, I'm going to sit back in my chair. I have a nice cup of Chinese tea and Chinese uh, Chinaware from actual China, believe it or not. I'm going to, I'm sipping my Chinese tea, I'm relaxed, I'm in my zone, I'm in my element, ready to talk about the finer points of classical Chinese poetry. Chinese characters may contain a double entendre when used linguistically as, uh, oh yeah, just F5. I don't want you all to miss my, my glorious Chinese segment, so we're gonna wait a second. I'm gonna sip my tea again, hold up. Mmm, that Chinese tea. Wait, I have some Chinese silver over here I can play with real quick as we wait for everyone to F5. Oh, uh, yeah. Get a nice shekel here. Can I, can I ting it? Oh, no. Ah! I dropped it. I don't want to drop my, my silver. Hold up. Ah! I dropped it again. I will start from the beginning. Don't you worry. Here, chat. Sounds nice, huh? Ooh, the good silver. Okay, everyone's back. Let's begin. Uh, Chinese poetry, uh, as all poetry of all languages, may contain double entendres. That is a word that has a second meaning based on how it's written or its context in the work. So, um, Chinese characters, especially complicated ones, are not wholly unique. They are composed of what are called radicals, which are smaller Chinese characters that compose the entire glyph. In this instance, you can see that in the character, there are three different parts. The top left, the top right, and the bottom. These each have their own meaning. In this instance, um, the three parts mean from uh, top left to top right to bottom. The top left is woman. The top right is um, in, in addition. It means also. And then the bottom symbol means... Uh, sort of collectively your intentions, your, your heart, your mind, your thoughts, your intentions. So together you have woman and intentions, but actually the top character, the two characters there are one, one symbol. They have their own meaning. And as it explains here, the bottom symbol means heart or intentions and the top symbol, which is two symbols means slave and together the word slave and heart means angry so he has literally tattooed uh the story of this character is that in the linguistic history of this character is that a slave woman who was not happy with her master um harbored anger and now in modern chinese context uh, it just means as, as a particle it can mean anger um, so he has literally tattooed this, this disobedient slave character to his chest, which is interesting. Um, that's why you shouldn't, as a white man, get Chinese or Japanese characters tattooed to your, your skin. Because even though it's kind of it looks like this is the symbol for anger, man, you really don't know the full classical history of that character. 
where it comes from, what it means, and how it means in a poetic sense when it's tattooed by itself on your skin. Um, and to further cement that this is what this means, there is uh, a, a Chinese speaker pointed out to me that there is a counterpart, which is written ex almost exactly the same way, but it has a completely different meaning. This character has the same two symbols, but then a different one on the top right. It has woman, it has open, and then it has um, the word for intentions again. So this is a woman who is open, receiving, and that is her intentions. And it is the exact same thing. It literally means um, uh, uh, a woman who is receiving. And actually, that third character that's just like a square, it, the, the glyphs actually try to look like what they represent. So it's open. It looks like an open door. The square actually is a modern Chinese slang for blowjob. So the woman has the intention of a blowjob, and therefore the symbol means to show consideration for others or to forgive or to pardon. So in the... Classical Chinese poetry context of this symbol, the slave has ex forgiven her master, and therefore um, she, has, she has forgiven him. And that's the modern Chinese word for forgive. But on his skin, he has the word for anger, so um, he has not tattooed the, the slave blowjob intention. He has shown the, the slave anger intention. And that, my friends... My proud Maddie listeners, is your China China Chinese thingy of the day. As I'll say, I I I have adorned myself with the bountiful fruits of my social credit score. I am not, I do not have a low social credit score. I have a high social credit score. I've been banking my social credit for fucking a decade now, okay? <laughs> a new future on the stream. Exactly right. Um, hopefully, Ricada doesn't get too mad at that. But that, I'm literally, that's why you do not tattoo Chinese shit on your skin. Because, I mean, he says that, like, a Chinese person saw his tattoo and gave, like, his ju I think he said his jujitsu teacher saw that he tattooed anger on his skin i was like heck yeah brother and i don't know i i, I, I don't know i'm just like that's, that's strange thank you for watching this clip this is the cac remember to like and subscribe